Hi, I'm Lari, and welcome to your 45-minute at-home lower body strength workout. What you need today? Dumbbells. Whatever you have, grab them. For resistance reference, I have a pair of 25, 20, and 10-pound dumbbells. I will always tell you what weight selection I am using. Just remember that you and I are different, so you may need to go heavier than what I am using in order to feel challenged, or you may need to go lighter than me in order to keep good form. Find a weight selection that feels challenging for you while maintaining great form throughout. You will also need a mini band. I have a latex medium resistance mini band. You could also use a fabric band. I am recommending medium resistance so we can increase that range of motion today. So just grab what you have handy. You will need a bench. Now, if you don't have a workout bench, that's fine. Use a couch, a chair, a bench that's not a workout bench, something that'll just provide a little bit of elevation and support when needed. At times, there are a couple tri sets where I will be uh, side lying or lying down on the bench. If you don't have a bench or a stool, couch, chair available, you can always perform it on the mat. Same exercise, just reduced range of motion. Odd request, but I would also like for you to have something like this to help stabilize the body. So I have a Swiffer broom. It's gonna, it works beautifully. You can have a stick, a pole, a sturdy steel golf club, baseball bat, whatever you have, we will be using it to help stabilize the body like so. And lastly, you're gonna need a mat. Here's today's format. We have triset. So we have three exercises at a time. We perform each triset twice, but we're gonna cut the time in half for round two. Here's how it's going down. First round, we have 75 seconds on the left side. We then go to the right side for 75 seconds. I'm not mirroring you yet. Then we have 15 seconds to recover, drop the weight, shake it out before going to a bilateral exercise for 60 seconds. After that tri set is up, 15 seconds to recover before going left for 45, right for 45, 15 seconds to recover, 30 seconds of that bilateral movement, and then 15 seconds to recover before we're on to a brand new tricep. Recovery time is limited today because we're going left to right, and then after that right side exercise, we're switching up the exercise pattern. This one can be quite fatiguing, so if needed, drop the weight selection and continue throughout. You can also physically hit that pause button throughout. You may want, I definitely recommend a towel and hydration around. Go ahead, meet me on your mat. Place your mini band right around the quads, right above the knees. Tabletop position. We begin with a warm up block and let's get to work. We begin your workout with banded donkey kicks, one to a quarter rep, starting on the left side. So tabletop position, place the band underneath the right knee. So we're anchoring the band that doesn't roll up on you. Now from here, neutral spine, core stays tight, dorsiflex at the ankle, bring it up, use the glute to bring it up, quarter rep at the top, bring it down. Try a rep on the hands and then try another rep on the forearms and see which one you like better. I prefer this way. Some people prefer this way. Either is right. Just find a way that works for you. If you want to amp it up a notch, you can place a light dumbbell. This is your warm up block though, behind the left knee. Now, if you have it behind the knee, you really have to hug it tight. It'll look slightly different, but it will provide a little bit extra resistance to your glute. We have this for 75 seconds. This begins your workout in three, two, and one, let's go. Squeeze the glute at the top. Squeeze it again. Minimize the movement in the low back. Front of the core stays tight to help prevent that movement from happening. The left hip should be pointing down at the ground. Try not to rotate open like that. That's why our core is tight to help stabilize as well. Stabilize the back, spine, stabilize the hips and pelvis as well. In 10 seconds, we switch to the other side. 
switch it to the right in three, two, and one. Anchor the band underneath the left, switch it over, and now we rep it out. Ten more seconds and then we ditch the dumbbell. We have reverse hypers next. You can perform it on the mat or if you have a bench or a chair. I want you to place your hips right along the crease of your device that's elevating you. Heels go up and out in three, two, and one. So raise it up, quarter up at the top, up and out. So if you don't have this bench, your starting position is here and your range of motion is just limited. Still performing the same movement pattern, but you're performing the top half instead of a fuller range of motion. Both work well. If this causes you any discomfort in your hips, be sure to use a pad underneath the hips to increase the comfort level. A couple more reps. Last three, two, in one. Woo! All right, we go back to our donkey kicks on the left side. This round, 45 seconds. Anchor band under right. Grab a dumbbell if you want. You don't have to. Quarter rep at the top, squeeze glutes, squeeze it again. Core stays tight. Minimize the movement in the low back. Keep the hips level. We switch sides in three, two, and one. Couple more reps. Last three, two, and one. Dumbbell goes down. You're either lying down on your mat or you're coming to your elevation to increase the range of motion. Reverse hypers, one to a quarter rep. Focus is on the glutes. Let's go. Yeah. 
plus three, two, and one. Nice work. Next up, we have a B stance RDL slow. I'm gonna give us a little extra time here to slide that band off. So go ahead, slide the band completely off. We have a dumbbell B stance RDL on the left side first. 80% of the weight is in the right foot. 20% will be in the right. I am going to start with 20 pound dumbbells, one in each hand. Core stays tight throughout. This is all in the hips. So send the hips back, back, back. Once the hips stop going back, you stop going back. Your glutes and hamstrings drive you up. Hips go back. Once the hips can no longer go back, hips can go no longer go back, then hips go forward. So think of a door hinge, going back, back, back. Drive it up. Tension in the glutes, in the hamstring. You can squeeze both glutes to drive you up. It's more in the left side though. If you start arching the back and then rounding the back, guess what? We're gonna feel it in the back. It's all about intent. And our intent with this exercise is to bias the glute and the hamstring of the left leg. So take it slow, take it controlled, make that mind muscle connection. It's not about how many reps you're getting in, but how many quality reps you get in. Switch to the right in three, two, and one. Other side, 80, 20. Same thing. Hips go back. Hips go forward. Hips go back. Hips go forward. Minimize the movement in the spine. So try to keep the spine as still as possible. Ten more seconds. You got this. A couple more reps. Last three, two, and recover. Set those dumbbells down real quick. Face me, heels and toes out. Wide stance. Dumbbell sumo squats. Dumbbells will be holding them low. Normal tempo, but control the movement. Let's go. Really hitting your glutes in that lengthened position, but also targeting the quads down, as well as the adductors or the inner thighs. Last three, two, and one. We shorten the time. If you want a challenge, try to increase the weight on the second round. I'll be grabbing 25s for this round. As long as your form is on point. Let's go. Slow tempo. If you felt good round one and you, you still had great form at the end, that's your sign to increase the weight selection. However, if it didn't feel right, decrease the weight selection. Everyone will be different, but if you felt good, you want that challenge, increase the weight on round two.
Switch sides in three, two, right side. Let's go. Last three, two, and one. Set those dumbbells down, shake it out. Sumo squats, normal tempo, heels and toes out. Try to maintain that same weight. Come on, we got this, 30 seconds, that is it. We go in three, two, and one. Last three, two, and one, recover. Next up, dumbbell Bulgarians, one dumbbell only. I'll be using one 20 pound dumbbell. A little extra time during the recovery, grab your stabilizing object. So for me, that is my Swiffer. I will be stabilizing with the left hand. So left foot forward, left hand has the Swiffer to help stabilize, right foot goes back, right hand has the dumbbell. All right, so this is going to help stabilize the body. We take it down, quarter rep at the bottom, drive it up. Now, ideally, we should be able to do it without. So you don't need it, but towards the end, once it gets super challenging, which it should, then what we can do, instead of our form being compromised, we can use the left hand to help assist. This also really helps to stabilize those hips. So we're not shifting the weight all in the left hip and the left hip starts to slant. So it helps to keep the hips nice and level. Again, you can do this with or without. The main focus here is in that left leg. You're feeling it in your quads, in your glutes. Hamstrings are working as well. We switch sides in three, two, and one. Press off, switch sides. Left hand has the dumbbell, right foot forward, right hand helps to stabilize. Make sure that back foot is down. Find your ending position first, quarter rep, then drive it up. Last three, two, and one. Wow, Swiffer off to the side <laughs> or your pull. Next up, we have hip hinge swing. So same movement pattern as the B stands RDLs, equal weight in both feet. Momentum, all right, we swing it. Let's go. Hips back, hips forward. Squeeze the glutes at the top. We're not feeling it in the shoulder. Heck, I could even do that at the very top because before we feel it in the shoulders, the dumbbell 
is coming down. Let gravity lead you. Last three, two, and one. Wow, short recovery if you can. Increase the weight. I know we are out of breath. This block is hard. All right, left foot forward. Left hand, use it. It's there for support, physical and emotional. We perform a quarter rep at the bottom. Drive it up. Switch sides in three, two, and one. Last three, two, and recover. Wow, Swiffer off to the side. Hip hinge swings, glute and hamstring focused. Here we go, only 30 seconds, we got this. We go in three, two, and one. Three, two, and recover. 15 seconds. Single leg hip thrust is next. Start with body weight only. We have a quarter rep at the top. If you are more advanced, feel free to add a dumbbell to the left hip. All right, let's go. Bring it up, quarter rep at the top, bring it down. Keep the space in between the rib cage in your the bony part of the hip known as the asis joint keep that the same exact space so right now i have my thumb bottom rib cage index finger to the hip it's staying the same size now if you start to feel this in your back there's probably a lot of that going on lumbar flexion and extension so keep it still add that quarter rep mind muscle connection this one is tough. This is tough with just body weight. Again, if you are more advanced and you want, add the dumbbell, go ahead, add the dumbbell to the left hip to add that resistance. I am feeling it though with body weight only and I consider myself, I don't know, intermediate advanced. So <laughs> pick your poison. Last three, two, wow, and one. I could barely get that last rep up. I don't even know if I did. Here we go, other side. Same thing. Minimize the movement in the spine. Hinge, 
from the hip. Squeeze that glute. Now, if you're feeling it more in the quad, your foot may be too close to the bench. If you're feeling it on the hamstring, foot may be too far away. Find that sweet spot. If you find that you have to move the spine in order to get that full hip extension, you may be here. All you gotta do, scoot up. In 10 seconds, we recover and we will place the band around the quads. And three, two, and one, band around the quads. Now I will be grabbing a 20 pound dumbbell for this round, placing it on my hips, bilateral hip thrust pulse abductions. That was a mouthful. So find the top of your hip thrust, press out into the band. Now we go down, up and out, down, up and out. So not only are we going up, getting the glute max, but we're also hitting the glute med by pressing into the band. So think quarter reps, small controlled movement, constant tension in the glutes. Last three, two, and one. All right, band off. Now, if you want more of a challenge, shorter round, grab a dumbbell now. Increase the dumbbell resistance if you used one previously, or just grab a dumbbell to try it out. We'll see, here we go. Single leg hip thrust, quarter rep at the top. You can place the dumbbell like so, just like we were doing bilaterally, or you can place it like this. Give us up to you. This one's tough. If the dumbbell does not allow you to reach that full range of motion at the top, ditch the dumbbell. Switch sides in three, two, wow, and one. I failed right there, but failing is a good thing. If I can't get another rep, that means I am really challenging the muscle. So don't ever get down on yourself if you can't get another rep. I look at that as a great thing. That means we are pushing our limits. As long as form is on point and we're feeling it where we're supposed to feel, not in weird places that we don't wanna feel, typically like the low back or the knees, then we're doing great things. Focus, squeeze, squeeze more. Last three, two, and one, band. Take it around the quads. This time I'm grabbing a 25 pound dumbbell, increasing the resistance slightly. Only 30 seconds. Let's get there, it's coming in hot. Here we go, let's do it. Up and out. Keep constant tension in the glutes. Don't let it go. Last three, two, and recover. Dumbbell off to the side, slide the band off. Next up, we have a dumbbell lateral lunge on the left. Static lateral lunge, so wide stance. 
We're going to the left side first. I am mirroring you, 20 pound dumbbells, two count pause at the bottom. So one, two, drive it up. One, two, drive it up. Any knee issues, you may want to limit the knee flexion and extension. So just keep, you can keep the knee right here and then drive it up. But if you don't have any knee issues, we can go a little bit further to increase the engagement in the quads. Really drive up through that left foot. Two count pause in that lengthened position. Wow, drive it up. Glutes are working. We may be feeling it all in that inner thigh, all in the quads. Glutes are helping too. Core, keep it tight. We switch sides in three, two, and one. Last three, two, and one. Dumbbells down. Wow, recover. Next up, calf raises. Quarter up at the top. One dumbbell only. Anchor it around the chest. Here we go in three, two, and one. Quarter up at the top. Bring it down. Squeeze the calves. Squeeze them again. Bring it down. Heel up. Heel does not come down until after that quarter rep. Up, up again, down. Up, up again, down. three, two, and recover. All right, 15 seconds, we do it again. I am going to keep the same resistance this time. I could, <laughs> my form will slip if I try to increase. I know my body will, but if you wanna feel challenged, feel free to increase the resistance. I cannot stress enough that you and I are different, all right? But if needed, do exactly what I'm doing. Just hold on to the exact same resistance, shorter amount of time, maintain that one, two count pause at the end. Last three, two, and one. Other side.
Last three, two, and one. Wow, recover. Calf raises, 30 seconds, one dumbbell. Quarter up at the top. Let's go. Last three, two, and one. Recover. Next up, I'm gonna give us a little bit more time. We will need our stick, our broom, our stool, our bench, our chair, whatever we have to help stabilize a little bit more. We have a single leg RDL. Left side will be the working side. So the left hand has your whatever you've got, <laughs> all right? Left foot grounds. Right leg's gonna come up, but the right leg's not doing anything. Right hand has the dumbbell, I have a 20 pound dumbbell. From here, we take it down, hinge. The hip goes back, back, back. Bring it up. Back, back, back. Bring it up. This is just here to help with that stabilization so our hip doesn't become uneven. We don't put it all in the left and rotate open. That's not gonna feel very good. It'll also help stabilize the spine. So minimizing that spine movement. So instead of going like that, feeling it in the lumbar, we're hinging from the hips, feeling it more in the glutes and in the hamstrings, driving it up. Now feel free to do it without. You can even grab one dumbbell in each hand. This is your workout. So I'm just showing you a different way to do it, a different way to feel it. You have the option. You always have control of the workout. You can always change it up to fit your needs better. Other side in three, two, and one. The left hand has the dumbbell. Right foot grounds, right hand has your stabilizing object. Now hinge from the right hip, back, back, back. Bring it up. So it's not how far, don't even worry about that back leg, that left leg. You can keep it straight by all means if you like it. You can also keep it bent and let it just kind of do its own thing. We're not feeling it there. We're putting all the emphasis on the right side. Last three, two, and one. Swiffer off to the side. We have a goblet squat, quarter rep at the bottom. All right, anchor the dumbbell to the chest. I'm using 20 pounds to start. Find your in range motion, quarter rep, drive it up. Some of us will be right here. That's good, that's cool. Some of us will be down here cool too. Everyone's range of motion will be different because we are different, unique individuals. We're trying to keep that pelvis neutral throughout. So if you find that the pelvis is really tucking under at the bottom in order for you to get this, just come right here parallel. Maybe we need to work on our ankle mobility. Last three, 
two, and I couldn't get that last rep up. One. All right, here we go, round two. All right, I'm doing it this round. Increasing the weight. Left foot grounds, left hand has your object, right hand has the dumbbell. So it's all in the left glute and left hamstring. Bring it up. Hip goes back, hip comes up. Last three, two, and one, other side. And recover. All right. We don't need our stick anymore. Off to the side. Here we go. Goblet squats. One to a quarter rep. I'm going to stay with that 25 pound dumbbell. Quarter rep is at the bottom. Let's go. Last rep and recover. Wow. All right, final block. We need our band around our quads. I'm gonna give us a little extra time to recover here. We have banded abductions one to a quarter rep. We are doing this on the bench, side lying on your bench or your chair, whatever you have to increase the range of motion. Now, if you do not have that bench or chair, you are just going to be performing it on the mat. All right, here we go. Left side first. Sideline position, left leg is down, quarter rep at the top. All the way down, quarter rep at the top. Really honing in on that upper outer portion of your glute. Again, if you don't have this bench, perform it on the ground and you'll just be here to here, which is still very challenging. If you want more of a challenge, if you're advanced, if your band isn't enough, take a dumbbell, place it right here. I'm good. Again, I consider myself intermediate to advanced. I'm good right here. How you feel? If it's not burning right now, round two, grab a dumbbell. For me, it's a struggle bus. Keep the form locked in. This is the end, our final triset of the day. Other side in three, two, wow, in one. I'm just gonna swing it around so I can still face you. And we get to work.
final 10 seconds, y'all. We got this. Last three, two, and wow, one. All right, we have bridges. So we're on our mat. I'm grabbing a 20 pound dumbbell, placing it on the hips, the band where it's at. Top range of motion only. So think half reps. So let's go ahead and bring it all the way up. We wanna feel in your glutes, so adjust your feet accordingly. Press into the band. Now it's halfway down, all the way up. Halfway down, all the way up. And as you go up, you're squeezing the glutes and you're pressing into the band. Last three, two, and one. All right, bring it back to your bench if you have it. If not, you're doing it on the ground. We have abductions, one to a quarter rep. You can grab a weight if you want. I'm good right here. I was struggling that last 30 seconds, so we'll see how round two goes. Quarter rep at the top. If you're adding the dumbbell, you're placing it where that band is. Right here not gonna do much. So make sure if you are adding the dumbbell, you're doing so at the appropriate length to actually provide you that extra resistance. You can also add some extra resistance with the hand if you want. Fight against it, wow. Humble yourself. Other side, and recover. Last three, two, and one. All right, bridges. This time I'm grabbing a 25 pound dumbbell. Top range of motion only. Keep that connection locked in to the glutes. We go in three, two, and one. Up and out. Switch to full range of motion next, only 15 seconds. This begins our burn out in three, two, and one, 15 seconds. Hold at the top and pulse in three, two, and one, 15 seconds. Back to full range of motion in three, two, and one, 15 seconds. Hold at the top and pulse in three, two, and one, 15 seconds here. We are almost there. Keep that connection locked into the glutes. We end with an ISO hold. Just hold and squeeze those glutes in three, two, and one. Up and hold. Press out into that band, up one inch higher. Hold and squeeze those glutes as hard as you can. 
final 10 seconds. Press into the band even more, one inch higher. Last five, four, three, two, and wow, my glutes are shaking at the end. All right, dumbbell off to the side. We are done. Remove that band. Remove it, remove it. And now let's stretch. Let's just go into figure four. Back down. We deserve it. Let's lie down for a minute. Okay, press and pull. So gently press into the leg that's bent. So that is my left leg. Just gentle press to open up that left hip and then pull the right knee in. When you're ready, take it to the other side. Ooh. One more big deep breath. And release, come to your belly. Let's do a little upward dog. Right hip down, look over left shoulder. Left hip down, look over right shoulder. Come to center, bring it back right foot forward and take that left hand up and over just start to pulse it you'll feel it in that left hip flexor and hold hinge forward just a little bit more open up a little modified lizard here you can kind of roll onto the blade of the foot if that feels good and let's undo that other side up and over Hold the pose, not the breath. Hinge it forward, come a little deeper. If you want, kind of roll over into the blade of the foot. Rotate inward, wow. I'm going to link an additional hip stretching video in the description below if you want more. Check it out, feels so good. All right, bring that foot in, come down to a seated position. Let's take one foot out at a time, doesn't matter which side. Take the opposing arm up and over. Now we're feeling it more along the QL. Inhale back up. Now face the toe. We're feeling it more in the hamstring. You'll, you'll feel it in the back as well. Let's hit the other side. Quick stretches, because this was a pretty quick workout. If you find a stretch feels really good, by all means, stay there. Hit pause. Go back to it. And come out of it, face forward, face forward, face towards the toe. And feet wide, <laughs> inhale up and exhale down. Ooh, this is gonna get the inner thighs, groin area. And when you're ready, come out of it. We are done, my friends. As long as you tried your best, that is what matters most. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, do all the things. Your love and support means the absolute world to me. If you wouldn't mind, share this with a friend that you think would enjoy the workout. Maybe it's a friend of me. I don't know, you know, <laughs> whatever. This one's hard. So again, as long as you tried your best, that's what matters most. Tag me in your post and stories on IG at Laurie Midkiff. And most importantly, have an amazing rest of the day, my friends. You rock.